Uh, so we've already discussed some of the topics that I'm going to cover off in my presentation on Ethereum for Enterprise, but I'll give you a little bit more detail on what Block Apps is doing and what we're trying to do and why we're pushing into Ethereum and Enterprise so hard. So one thing you should understand about Block Apps is we are the leading um, enterprise platform built on Ethereum. We have over 1,000 projects that have been built on our stack over and on? over 130 companies that are already working as our customers. In addition, we built the Haskell implementation of Ethereum, but really what we're trying to do is make sure that Ethereum stays relevant in the entire ecosystem of enterprise blockchain development. To that end, we're working with key partners like our uh, partner Consensus, Deloitte. We launched Blockchain as a Service a year ago with Microsoft. And if you notice on the slide here, there are some interesting Chinese clouds that I won't announce today, but if you stay tuned, we have some very exciting developments happening on Friday. So what is going on with the market right now in terms of enterprise blockchain development? As I mentioned in the panel, what we're seeing is that there's a very clear development that systems are actually moving into production. People are finding real business use cases that make economic sense for those businesses to develop. Here you see a quote from Tim Grant of R3 Labs that says, the banks that are belonging to the R3 consortium are not really interested in POCs anymore. They want to talk about pilot production systems, things that will help their businesses. And if anything, I think uh, blockchains have proven that economic incentives work when it comes to adoption. So what are the kind of business use cases that these companies are exploring? So on a general level, we can really group them into two areas. One is about simplifying existing business processes. So many people say, inside an organization, why would you need a blockchain? Doesn't everyone trust each other? And the answer is no. Like different departments, different branches, different even like regional offices don't fully trust each other. They all run their own databases. They all use different methods to coordinate between the different parties. So this is where we start. We work inside an organization to help them improve coordination between these different parties. But this is only the beginning. Where they want to get to is to build new applications and new businesses that are simply not possible without blockchains. So for example, you, know, you may start with wanting to improve coordination between your different branches inside a bank. But where you really want to get to is something that looks more like a consortium, where you're onboarding all your partners, thousands of partners, onto an entirely new platform, and they can talk directly peer-to-peer -peer with each other. So you may have heard that financial industry is very, very keen on adopting blockchain. You know, a recent report by Goldman says that blockchain technology can save finance industries $50 billion if they implement. And the big question that I get from a lot of people is, how does this happen? Why are these savings possible? Well, there are three key reasons why they're possible. One is legacy infrastructure. If you go inside almost any bank today, you'll find systems that are running on mainframes that are 20 or 30 years old. And these systems are reaching end of life, and they're getting more and more expensive to maintain. So whether or not they're moving to a blockchain, they really have to update these systems. And one of the things that we see is that they're really wanting to move to a leapfrogging next generation system like a blockchain. The second thing is that the entire security and compliance space is moving very rapidly. And these old systems are very difficult to move to this. So with blockchains, the benefit is security and adaptability, especially with smart contract enabled blockchains like Ethereum are kind of built in from the start. And then lastly, these current systems are based on batch processing. So, you know, they don't update in real time. You know, the best systems update once a day. Some systems update over a week. Now, this poses a huge risk to financial institutions. One of the things that the financial crisis showed to most finance industries is not that do you have bombs sitting on your balance sheets that you don't know about? 
It's where these bombs are. So within the blockchain landscape, you guys know about lots of experiments. So if you just look at the enterprise space, you know, let's start in the middle where you have the sort of Bitcoin derived things. These are things like what digital asset is doing or chain. And the challenge that they are facing is that they're building on top of a protocol that was only designed for one thing, cryptocurrency. So they have to build their own application stacks. And as we mentioned before, these application stacks are not interoperable with each other. Then you have a lot of experiments going on that are trying to solve specific problems in specific verticals, like uh, R3 Corda, Big Chain, Eris. And you know, the challenge that these guys are facing is that it's hard to get wide-scale adoption on these specific verticals. Lastly, you have Ethereum. So as we know, Ethereum is designed from the start to be a general application protocol. It's not meant to be used in enterprises, but because of this generality, it can be adopted to many of the use cases that enterprises really want to pursue. And there are thousands of developers like yourselves already building up this ecosystem. So it's giving enterprises a lot of confidence that they can build on this and that in the future, there will be developers like yourselves to support it. And because of these things, Ethereum is actually winning in the enterprise space. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. I'm obviously an Ethereum fanboy, but you can read reports by Accenture, Forrester, Gardner, EY, Microsoft support, and all of these groups are telling enterprises that if you want to experiment with blockchain, Ethereum is the way to go. But my favorite quote is the one from a recent Accenture report that just says, every self-respecting lab is running Ethereum. Now, one of the benefits of Ethereum is it gives these enterprises the ability to model and prototype business use cases very, very fast. So let's take an example of combining our blockchain as a service with Ethereum. Fidor Bank uh, signed a relationship about 11 months ago with Ripple, and they were trying to build a proof of concept on that system. They spent months trying to do this. And out of frustration, their team started to look around for other solutions. They found our solution on Microsoft's the blockchain as a service. They were able to spin it up. And within a week, they were able to build a prototype of a customer banking solution, complete with KYC and AYML checks, all by themselves. And the first time we heard about it is when th there was a press release on Coindesk announcing that this had been built on our system. So that's the power of Ethereum. You know, you can model incredibly complex business processes in a few lines of code. And the other benefit is that, as Roman mentioned, because the public chain is out there and being, you know, lots of experiments are going on, soon this will be basically tested more than any core banking system out there today. Now, what are the challenges with the public chain and why are we so interested in building these enterprise blockchains? Now, one of the things that we see today is there are thousands of enterprise, there are thousands of Ethereum developers and blockchain developers, and within a year, that's amazing. But we want that number to be millions of developers. And so how do we achieve that? One thing is we have to make it easier for normal enterprise developers to onboard to blockchain applications. And we've done that by building simplified tools, SDKs, that allow these developers to start building applications. Our first one we announced last year was Block, that is built in Node.js, and makes writing a blockchain application more like writing a web app. Recently, we announced a Visual Studio integration now, 9 million Visual Studio developers can also start building blockchain applications. And today, I can announce a Xamarin SDK integration, which allows cross-platform development of blockchain applications on mobile. So you can write once a blockchain application and deploy it on an iOS device or an Android device, seamlessly. <laughs> Thank you. But there's more than this. Honestly speaking, 
most enterprises and most developers don't care about what consensus algorithm you're running. They don't care about whether you know, you're running the EVM or something else. What they care about is, I want to be able to run, write an application once and deploy it on a private chain or a consortium chain or the public chain. And I want this to be seamless. And that's what we've done at Block Apps. So we've completely separated the application layer from these underlying core layers on the Ethereum blockchain and the private chains we're generating. So an enterprise can come along and say, you know, we don't want to use the standard mining algorithm. We want to use something more traditional, like Raft or PFT. We, or we want to use some external uh, algorithm like Tendermint. And they can all do this without having to rewrite those applications that they've already created and deploy it seamlessly. In addition, they can deploy it on virtually any cloud they want or on premises. So we're already working with cloud providers like Microsoft, but we've extended it to Red Hat and Cloud Foundry. And very shortly, you'll hear about some new clouds that we're adding, and we're very excited about it. Now, one of the key challenges that we've faced is that unlike the public chain, enterprises don't want all the information to be public. So let me give you a very common use case. I want to do a supply chain. I have different part suppliers. One part supplier, I pay 10 cents a part. Another part supplier, I pay 20 cents a part. I don't want these guys to be able to see these variants in pricing. So what we've done is we've created what we call a multi-chain fabric built on Ethereum. What this allows is that each individual partner can sit on a blockchain. They can have all their smart contracts. They get all the auditability between these two peers. And these interactions are summarized on a master chain. Now, what this allows is that I have complete trust between my partners, and I have complete visibility in real time to all these transactions, but the individual partners can't see the details of all my contracts. And this applies whether it's a, a financial transaction, whether it's a supply chain transaction, or any other type of industry. Now, as we mentioned before, this also allows interoperability. One thing is, as we build up these multi-chains where we have multiple blockchains, it's a simple matter over time to expose it to a consortium chain or the public chain. Now, the second thing about entering into the larger uh, enterprise ecosystem is you can't do this alone. Enterprises aren't going to come to a startup like Block Apps or even companies like consensus just by themselves. They're used to dealing with massive amounts of vendors who have long experience dealing with their business use cases. And they're used to dealing with system integrators and business processors outsiders to maintain these systems over time, and they want to deploy these where they want. So that is why Block Apps is working with companies like consensus, like Deloitte, like EY, who understand these different business processes and can help them guide their process onto mapping their business onto blockchains. Secondly is, we are working with system integrators and BPOs, companies like Wipro and Cognizant. So when these companies want to maintain these blockchain applications over time, they can work with system integrators that they're already working with. And then lastly is, we are deploying these on multiple clouds. So Microsoft was only the beginning. Soon, you're going to be able to deploy a block app Strato node on any cloud out there, whether it's Chinese-based, whether it's Western-based. Pretty much every cloud provider will be able to provide, and you'll be able to connect to your network seamlessly. <laughs> so what do we have to do to bring Ethereum to enterprises? We really have to do three things. One is we have to build an enterprise architecture designed for enterprises. And what this means is we have to expand the idea of what Ethereum is. We can't say, look, everything is going to happen on the blockchain. We have to be able to have connectors into existing databases. We have to be able to open our tools up to these millions of developers who are going to build these applications. And we have to onboard lots of systems that already exist and let them modify things or act as oracles onto these blockchain applications. Secondly, 
we have to basically provide business models like blockchain as a service, which reduce barriers to entry. As my colleague Andrew Keyes from Consensus mentioned this, we need to provide a lot of modular tools that help these enterprises spin up things very, very quickly and go from one or two nodes to thousands of nodes seamlessly without having to you know, hire a bunch of consultants or work with us in order to kind of grow their applications. And lastly, we need to work with partners who are already helping in the enterprise technology space. These, this started with Microsoft, but doesn't end there. It has to go to companies that these companies are working with, like Deloitte, like EY, and there will be new room for new players in this space. So I ask all of you today to help me build this enterprise Ethereum ecosystem together. As block apps, <laughs> Thank you very much. So as block apps, we want to take our leading position to provide infrastructure, but leverage all of your knowledge about building applications to help service all of these enterprises. Already, we're working with companies in finance, insurance, healthcare, IoT, supply chain, but we think that blockchain technology, and especially Ethereum blockchain technology, can transform virtually any business that it touches. And we can't do this alone. So please contact me. This is my WeChat ID. And I look forward to building the Enterprise Ethereum blockchain ecosystem with you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Victor. Thank you.